Hello, uh, my name is Suman and uh, thanks uh, organizers, thanks ICTS, thanks Momita for the introduction. And I'm going to talk about this. This is, a, uh, this is a series of work that actually started from this 2018 ICTS school, Order Entropy and Information in Soft Matter. And we all are <coughs> in the postdoc state when we did all this work and this is the series of collaboration and uh, the primary work that I'm going to talk today uh, is this one and this one. So my collaborators are Rahul, uh, he's Somo, this is Devarshi, this is Somapon, and this is Vinay, who is in University of Milan now. And to begin the story, we are all familiar with Mr. Brown's motion for centuries. So for example, if we, if we put a drop of ink in water, it actually shows some kind of a jittery motions like this. And this was some, some caricatures from uh, Pera's diary. So he shows that this kind of motion actually follows uh, this kind of random walk and the underlying uh, distributions are Gaussian that was shown by the Eugen Kepler. So that was the old story and this is what uh, the, the, the entire story can be unified into the Frick's law. So that tells that the displacement distribution in this kind of liquid is a Gaussian. But whether this is an universal story? Not really. For example, when liquid becomes uh, cold and dense, liquid becomes super cool and then it can approach the glass transition when things are very dense. It, in that case, the distributions are becoming non-Gaussian and that has been seen in many, many uh, uh, different kind of systems. This was the very first set of experiments was done in the colloidal uh, systems and this was uh, the theoretical, uh, theoretical models uh, was done by Pinaki who was a speaker in this uh, session. And also there were, and this was the series of, this was the beginning of the new story of non-Gaussian diffusion that also we have worked on. And there are many series of works that was done in that uh, period. So, so the thing is, uh, with time, these distributions remain non-Gaussian and with time, this, they spread and also there are change in the non-Gaussianity that brings the story of the intermittency. So dynamics is intermittent in this kind of glassy liquid. So if, and this is our very, very uh, favorite measure of non-Gaussian parameter to identify the, and, and to identify and to quantify the non-Gaussianity in the distribution and the simplest definition considers the lower order moments. So for example, uh, this is called as non-Gaussian parameter also known as the Binder cumulant, also uh, known as the kurtosis. So this, the definition in 1D is this. So this, this alpha 2 becomes zero for a purely Gaussian distribution. And when one, can, one has some non-zero values, it means that the distribution, uh, that becomes a measure, the, the, it becomes a measure of non-Gaussianity. So what happens in the supercooled liquid and the glassy liquids, with time, when we have this kind of intermittent motion, initially there are very small values of the non-Gaussianity and then it develops some peak and at long times it actually decays. So that time scale becomes a characteristic time scales. And this was, the, uh, this, this was seen in many, many, many systems. Not only in the passive liquid, even in the active liquids, even in the cellular dynamics, people have seen similar kind of things. But the question is, this definition of non-Gaussianity is only limited till fourth order. So the question that we address was, are we missing something? Because for example, when we are approaching a very heterogeneous state, it can happen that the higher order information can actually give us some additional information which might be missing here. So to address this question, we, we simply try to we, we give it a shot by asking why not consider all other moments? Why not we think about some kind of a distance metric? And why not we, uh, we, uh, and we, can, we could have thought of, of some kind of a uh, entropic measure, the simplest possible measure that we have borrowed from this earlier work of Simon, uh, Sanjay Kumar and, 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 and Ivan. So they were looking into the non-Gaussian states, quantum optical states, and they were looking, computing the non-Gaussianity. So we have contextualized 
that idea into this glass problem and that so so the idea to compute this non gaussianity measure was very simple so it learned for example given some kind of a non gaussian distribution it has to identify its nearest gaussian and we have to find out the distance between the distribution that was given and its nearest gaussian that we learned by training so using this prescription we apply this kind of uh, dynamics for example this is at high temperature uh, dynamics when they are they are gaussian at uh, they are intermittently gaussian there are some non gaussianity in, in between and at high temp at, at at long times they are gaussian where at for, uh, for in the low temperature this is non gaussian for very long times so using this measure now we ask how different these two results are initially we computed this via this alpha 2 which is which had the contribution still fourth order and here we have the all order information and these are for different temperature and the result is very surprising so the time scales where the peak was appearing are not same so the time scales are different and the difference not only that if we correlate this time scales where the peak was appearing they are they are they are connected with some power law and that and 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 the, uh, the and even in the uh, nearby the mode, mode coupling temperature it doesn't show any difference at all so so uh, we were indeed missing something to understand this thing a bit more we are correlating here the the, the this quantity versus this quantity which shows that for low, uh, for high temperature the difference is very minimal and as we are approaching to the low low temperature states and the, we are approaching the glass transition so the difference becomes a keep on in increasing and they are diverging so another question we ask do we understand this uh, from some theory so earlier we make some predictions based on this uh, continuous time random walk models and we we showed this so this was the dependence between this alpha 2 versus delta sng that also shows this loop loop like behavior which we have validated in our this uh, in 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 molecular simulations the, say, the then the automatic question uh, the, then then automatically the question becomes whether this behavior is universal across this equilibrium uh, systems and also the non equilibrium systems or not so then we also dealt with some other kind of out of equilibrium transitions like here we dealt with the yielding here we are we are dealing with the active fluidization and there also what we see the kind of scaling the the, the kind of uh, entropic scaling that we that we see uh, in case of the supercooled liquid remains very similar so from here we are trying to understand whether uh, why this thing is 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 becoming very similar and why uh, the uh, so are there any underlying uh, connection between this kind of uh, this kind of uh, results that we get so so to summarize our results so we have shown the dynamic heterogeneity is seen in the complex uh, complex liquids and the intermittency that we see are uh, are, are characterized by the non gaussianity of the dis displacement distributions conventional measurements are limited to lower order moments which are usually limited to fourth or sixth order moments and on the contrary we when we deal with the entropic measures that contain all order information and they are much more uh, optimal than the conventional measurements and we validate its robustness in both equilibrium and out of equilibrium context and they and not only that we also are now uh, we are now trying to generalize the measure and by symmetrizing the the measure and also we try to understand whether we can generalize our story in the, in the context of this polymeric glass transition and also the conformational transition and i would like to thank my collaborators and thank you for their attention question As opposed to some of the pictures that you are showing, yes, uh, uh, for dynamic heterogeneity, yes, the corresponding length scale probably is not a diverging uh, quantity, truly, right? Yes. Uh, 
So this entropy divergence. This entropy the, doesn't have any. We are not sure whether it has got any connection with the length scale or not. Because although this is a quantity that is increasing when we are approaching the glass transition, it need not to be the length scale. Because this is dimensionally entropy. But even for example, if we look into uh, look the behavior of the sky four that actually shows this kind of, that connects this to the length scale. Even actually the recent work of Strickan that has shows, for example, when you approach the glass transition, that actually becomes, that gets saturated after you cross the mode coupling temperature. So, is there any relationship between the caging time and tau A, which you calculated? Because Well, that that's a very, that, that, that was one of the questions that we faced uh, in our review. So, I'll, so, so the, so, so the typical time scales are given by this tau alpha. So, the, this is the, this is the dependence between tau alpha and tau s. Tau s is the time scale that you obtain via this, this new metric. And tau alpha is the typical relaxation time that are, that is associated with the caging time scale, which is called this tau alpha. So, the behavior, what we are getting are a very weak power law dependence. So, so if, if it is uh, completely, if it's the same as ta, the critic, I mean the caging time scale, then you're. Uh, we cannot are, say that they are exactly same. What we can say for now that they are connected in some power law. So, so it can be explained by CTRW, right? Yeah, we have already explained it via CTRW because in the CTRW model that what we have seen, what we have modeled, uh, we have considered the system as you have the slow and fast uh, regions in the system. And you have associated the different time, you have the, so the, the ingredients for the CTRW model are the, the distribution of the region or, and the density. And you have different associated waiting time scale in this mobile and the immobile regions where we consider that the caging happens and that region becomes immobile. And for example, this out of cage movement that are associated with the mobilities, higher mobilities. So these two associated time scale distributions we have considered. Uh, this was actually a very famous model of Langer. So, so these are the two waiting time distributions. And if you if you make use of this all these ingredients, so you can compute this. You, you can uh, you can formulate uh, the displacement distribution in the Fourier Laplace space by CTRW thing. And then if you can take the inverse Fourier tra transform and the inverse Laplace transform, you end up with the distribution of the displacements. And once you have the displacement distribution, you can calculate this alpha 2 and delta s from uh, very easily. So, so that we already earlier uh, showed that this kind of dependence might be expected. So this was this EPL paper and in this recent work we have shown that this kind of dependence we also see in the simulations. And that holds for different temperatures across the means no matter you are close to the glass transition and when you are approach uh, high temperature states. Uh, this tau s versus tau alpha a is close to is close to one. We I think uh, we can discuss more. We are not sure why this is happening. Let us thank the speaker once more.